Hello and welcome back to Bannerlord and our unmodded playthrough. Now, as you can see, I'm actually in a little bit of a, well, I wouldn't say problematic situation, but it would be a situation that might turn sour relatively fast if this guy gets any kind of reinforcement. Thankfully, he is not getting any reinforcement, so I should be able to do quite well here. Oh, apparently this guy, no, no, never mind. He doesn't have anything to do with this. Anyway, I'm thinking that I'm going to try and see if I can maybe persuade him. <gasps> Whoa, that actually worked. 35% chance. Wow, that's some pretty crazy things going on here. Okay, there we go. Oh, another one. Do you think I can persuade him? If I can persuade him to join the Southern Empire, we might very well have a fantastic turn of power on our hands. Wish me luck. 15... <laughs> this is never going to work. <gasps> what? 15%? I thought to myself, this is never going to work. We're going to... What? Okay, I'm actually speechless. Uh, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I actually forgot about this. Um, yeah, I don't have much money, mate. <laughs> uh, 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 yeah. Even if I give him absolutely everything in my possession, <laughs> it literally gives him that much. Ah, uh, now I'm sad. Now I'm sad because I actually uh, thought to myself, oh, we might have an opportunity to, you know, help out our faction a little bit more. But no, no, this will not happen today. Ah, uh, now I'm super disappointed because I thought to myself, yeah, maybe he will actually join us. That would be so cool, you know, to actually get another one of those guys to join us. You know, maybe, you know, make our, uh, our stand against the Kuzate a little bit easier. Just a little bit. Doesn't have to be a super, super much amount. But, you know, that's how it goes. That is how it goes. Okay, I'm going to get out my crossbow, see if we can do some damage here. Oh, nice. We actually did some damage. I can't believe it. Maybe I can do some more damage. Yeah, unfortunately, they are, of course, Kuzate, so they are going to be extremely good at what they do in regards to horse archery and everything, and we're probably going to have some difficulties in general. And I've got to be a bit careful here because we have to be on the lookout for the enemy. As you can see, the enemy is actually coming towards us right now, and the horse archers are making a really, really difficult thing by basically running interference. They're pretty much doing what I try to do on Byron, which is actually kind of amazing. So yeah, they, they're actually proving themselves to be quite effective here. And I am going to be running onto the front lines here as well. I'm hopeful that our archers will actually start firing at the opponent's infantry now, because if they don't, we're going to be in a really bad situation. Let's tell my forces to charge in here. Now, now see if I can maybe do some damage myself. I can't believe I'm not actually killing things. Come on now. Come on. Yes, there we go. There we go. There's a, there's a lot of damage. Taking some damage from behind here because I am being shot in the back, which is not exactly nice of them, but that is to be expected, of course. Let's see if I can maybe uh, run up on them a little. Oh, hello. Oh, really? His sword is so extremely slow that I thought to myself, oh, let me just lower my guard. Yes, let me just lower my guard. That doesn't sound like a good idea. Okay, so we're just going to tell everyone else to charge in here. I've got to be a bit careful about the enemy archers. Bear in mind that it seems as though, oh, I got shot in the shoulder. I really thought to myself, oh, yes, everything's going well. And uh, it actually would have continued to go well if I had stayed alive, but now my forces are now going to auto-delegate themselves. And as I have shown in previous episodes and in, in previous series, in fact, when the enemy decides to go into an, well, when, the, when our allies decides to go into an auto-delegate uh, situation, they really do not become that effective at all. So I'm hopeful that we will do okay here. As you can see, we still, oh, we actually only took 11 casualties. That's pretty good considering. What did we mainly lose? A couple of archers here and there, recruits. Yeah, not actually even something, uh, not even that bad. Not even that bad. So I'm pretty happy with this. Let's speed things up. And that is indeed a victory for us. Fantastic. Look at that. Now, what am I getting? 11 renown, 9 influence, 6 morale. Not bad. I don't really care about the morale so much, but everything else. Oh, yeah. And we just gained a huge amount of money. Yes. That is exactly what he gets, it isn't it? Yes, it's exactly what he gets for being such a stubborn individual. Because if he had just joined us without, um, you know, wanting any money, then I would have been like, yeah, come on then, you know, let's, uh, let, you know, let's let bygones be bygones kind of thing. Uh, unfortunately, I've taken way too many casual... Oh, 
wait, way too many casualties, way too many prisoners. And so I'm going to have to let some of them go, unfortunately. Oh, I should have swapped some looters out. Oh, well, never mind. Um, I'm pretty happy with how that went, even though I did get myself eliminated. So this is now a bit of a problem. Although we do own this town over here, I am very injured. So I am a little bit, um, a little bit worried. And by a little bit, I mean a lot. <laughs> so this might be problematic because I was actually following a vassal over into Odok, which is the, uh, the town over there. I was actually following a guy and then I saw this other fellow and I thought, oh, okay, uh, you know, let's, uh, let's just fight this guy instead, you know, kind of thing. And uh, the other guy actually only had 53 units, so it would have made much more sense for me to actually fight him. But I thought, ah, we can do it, you know, we're not going to lose that many units. And uh, yeah, it actually ended up that we didn't lose that many, so it was not too bad. And we do get to take him prisoner, which is fantastic. Now, here's the thing, though. Because I don't have the other mod that gives me the ability to kind of ransom them for a significant amount of money, I probably won't be able to gain that much from it, which is going to be disappointing to say the least, but we'll try our best. So I'm just going to uh, spend a little bit of money here and there just getting a couple of horses and we probably want to get a little bit of extra uh, food as well. Let's just, ah, wait a minute. This long glaive is, is calling to me right now, although the thing is, is that if I use a spear, I'm going to have to become very good at pole arms and that's just not going to work. So I'm just going to sell everything really. And we'll sell everything else here. Oh, there's, that's way too much, isn't it? Yes, that is actually way too much. So uh, I, I guess what I'll do is I'll just sell everything that they have. I mean, sell everything that I have as much as they possibly can afford. And there you go. Nice. So we just gained a thousand and I literally didn't even have to worry about spending anything uh, myself, which is great. So now what we're going to do is um, we're going to be making our way downtown, walking fast, and uh, we will hopefully be able to get into this little little town here. Oh yeah, by the way, you may notice that I'm actually suffering a pretty significant deficit in the amount of income that I'm currently getting. Now, there's a reason for that as well. The Southern Empire has been declared war against by the Batanians, and I don't know how that was even possible because they are so incredibly far away from us. But because they have declared war against us, my smithy in Maranath is now no longer working for me. So that's unfortunate. Someone actually told me, by the way, that a brewery in... Yeah, a brewery in Vostrum is apparently really, really good... So I'm thinking that we're probably going to try and do something about that. But first, I'm just going to head in here and I will actually see whether there is a tournament. Ah, unfortunate. No tournament. So that is actually kind of bad. Uh, I'm going to get this Vlandian Corsair, actually. I feel like the Vlandian Corsair could be quite good. And we'll sell all of this for 5,000, which is actually very nice. So there you go. And yeah, so what we're going to do is we're going to try and go over there and see if I can maybe... I'm actually going to have a look and see how many units they have here. Bear in mind that I'm going to be doing a little bit of prisoner recruiting as well. Because I wouldn't mind a couple of horse archers here and there. Might be quite fun to utilize some of those. Okay, wow, they actually don't even have that much. They only have 220 in the garrison at Denustica. So if there is an army that our forces could potentially gather, then it would be very easy to take in my opinion. Uh, obviously I don't have the capacity. Do I have the capacity to actually make an army right now? Yes, I do. <laughs> Amusingly enough, I could do it. However, I don't have enough influence. Or do I? Oh, I actually do have enough influence. Oh, that's actually hilarious. Um, unfortunately, the problem with it is the fact that this guy only has 70. I have 50, so that's 120. And then this guy, yeah, it's just not going to add up, unfortunately. It's just not going to make enough... Uh, units to be able to take Denustica without them potentially sallying out and then obviously we've got the Crusades potentially running interference for us and maybe even sending one of their largest armies towards us which is definitely not something we want thank you so that's going to be a bit problematic oh there is actually a tournament going on here so I will be participating and we'll see how it goes there's a pretty nice horse here pretty nice horse 
Even though it's not something that I am going to be using myself, it could be useful for one of my companions or indeed just useful for selling or whatever the case may be. So let's see if I can do some damage here. Bear in mind that these guys are going to be kind of difficult to deal with considering he's got a massive amount of armor on. Take out him. Ah, come on now. Yeah, there we go. Take her out. Not to dinner this time around. But sometime. Oh, there we go. <laughs> Uh, yes, that's Iona. I'm so, so terribly sorry. Okay, so let's see. Oh, oh, brutal. Brutality right there. Absolutely. Okay, so let's have a look. Uh, uh, yeah, I'm a bit worried about this. They both have spears and they're going to be doing so much damage. Oh, nice. Oh, oh, I actually thought that that thrust was against him. Oh, dear. Okay, give me this. There we go. Oh, okay. Yeah, I have it. I have it. Okay, get ready. Get ready. Take him out. Okay, now switch to our um, switch to our one-handed. Oh, that was a bit too much damage for my liking. Stab him. Yes. Did you see that? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. And, and now we have to deal with an imperial heavy horseman as well. This is actually going to be quite quite, quite difficult. But thankfully, we do have a, a pole arm, which we're going to be able to use, hopefully to good effect. Ah, he's running in circles. That's not going to—that's not going to help you, sir. That's not going to run. It's not going to help you. You might want to run in squares, but not in circles, because that's just not going to work. Geometry. Nice. There we go. Took him down. Took him down. All right. Let's have a look. Ah, I wanted to thrust at him. My thrusting is not particularly accurate. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's what he said. Anyway, there you go. That is a wonderful victory for us. And uh, that was only in the... F what was that? What was that? The first round? Yeah, that was literally the first round. Hilarious. Okay, so let's continue onward. I... Oh, I'm given thrown weapons. Why'd you give me thrown weapons? Oh, dear. Oh, nice headshot. Nice headshot. Oh, you're dead. You're dead, sir. Oh, you're dead too. Oh, I'm doing extremely well with thrown weapons. I even killed my own guy. I even killed one of my one of my guys. Oh, no. Thought I didn't have uh, any other secondary weapon. That would have been hilarious. Okay, but there you go. I actually killed one of my own guys. And I killed uh, the enemy's horse, at least. But yeah, that was an absolute mess of a tournament right there. But now we're up against a recruit. <laughs> Got to say, I'm a little bit intrigued. Okay, I, I, I'm, I'm terribly sorry, sir. Terribly sorry. Um, that was, that was quite a foregone conclusion, shall we say, wasn't it? Okay, so we're up against Loom the Red. Isn't he one of our companions? I think he might be. Oh, that was some damage. Ah, I wanted a thrust. Oh, there we go. Nice head hit. Nice head hit. There we go. And there we are. Nice. That is it. A wonderful, wonderful victory. And we're going to be getting some good cash. And obviously a horse as well. And if we were to go to, I don't know, Vlandian territory or something like that, we'd probably be able to sell it for a very nice price. Let's actually take a look at the base price as it is right now. As you can see, it's only going to sell for 338 here. And it is significantly better than the Vlandian Warhorse, as you can see. Well, in HP at least. HP and charge damage a little bit and all that stuff but that's absolutely fine all right i'm gonna go into the uh, town center and we're gonna see if i can maybe buy a brewery all right so here we go fifteen thousand two hundred and ninety seven to buy out the brewery and that is exactly what we're going to do there we go because there are as one of you mentioned in the comments a couple of grain villages in the area and they are going to be significantly profitable later down the line, even if we have to leave the Southern Empire and join um, a different one. I mean, I don't, that's the point. I don't really want to do that personally. I would love to be able to uh, try and prevail with the Southern Empire against all odds, but that is very difficult to do. Uh, very, very difficult to do. Oh, oh, wait, wait a minute, wait a minute. Oh, okay, I can actually vote here. Okay, I guess, uh, oh, Regea. 
Oh, I see. So she opposes this proposal. For kingdom decisions, tier 4 plus clans choices have double effect. Influence cost of the ruler overriding the popular decision outcome is doubled. Alright, well, I guess what I'm going to do... I only have 30... Uh, this is absolutely wasteful and pointless for me to even vote here, personally. Um, so I guess I'll just do it. I don't even know what it's really going to do, to be honest. Did it did it do anything to our to our relation? I I, I didn't even see the pop up. I think it takes too long. But uh, yeah, anyway, uh, let's have a look here. Anyone else need some stuff? Aha, Normant. A plus three percent movement speed. That is that is much better than the other thing. All right, so we have another brewery. So we have another line of uh, revenue potentially. So that's that's really good. Unfortunately, uh, it might not last long. It might not last long. Uh, Lycaron has been... Oh, wow. Okay, so apparently... Ly yeah, apparently the Kuzate are actually fighting against the Western Empire because, of course, they are the, uh, they're the people that actually took back Lycaron. So that's going to be kind of interesting. Let's see what happens there. Let's just level up a couple of these guys, get some of these guys to join us. And uh, I think the looters are actually just going to go. I still have Akram, by the way. Still have Akram in my prisoner's hold. So that's actually kind of interesting. Not entirely sure when he's going to be leaving us. Um, but it's probably going to happen sometime soon. Anyway, let's make our way over to the battlefields, which I assume are probably going to be over in this direction. And what I would like to do is try and find someone to fight. Ah, now here we go. We actually have a bit of a situation with the Western Empire and the Kuzate. This is very interesting to me because if we can kind of stick around here, we might be able to prey upon a weakened vassal, which in my opinion is pretty much the only way anyone is going to be able to make anything of this. Because if I were to... Ah, here we go, here we go. Some people are actually leaving. If I were to just kind of run in there right now, obviously that's not going to work. Look at this. Southern Empire, once again, being taken prisoner all over the place. No idea why that is happening to them. Ah, it seems like... Oh, here we go. Yes, look at this. Their army is now disbanding. Unfortunately, as you can no doubt tell, my speed is really, really bad. 5.1 in comparison to the uh, enemy who is more than likely going to be super fast. So what I'm going to try and do is I will try to attack Kanujan, I think. Mm, yeah, I'll try and attack Kanujan. He's got a lot of recruits, kind of. And we have a lot of recruits as well, so it kind of makes sense. Um, do we have a lot of recruits, actually? got five nomads yeah i've got 16 imperial recruits that's actually way too many in my opinion but anyway we're going to try our best he's going to be moving very fast as you can see he's actually moving at 4.2 normally and we are moving at i think 5.1 so i should be able to catch him unfortunately he's now really really close by to that other guy uh here we go i can split them nice okay there we go there we go that seems to be working quite nicely. No, I'm actually moving at 3.9. He's moving at 4.0. Uh, so if I can just catch him a little bit, maybe try and just head him off here. Uh, yeah, he, oh, he's, wa he's walking himself into a dead end. Almost. We almost got him. Nice. There you go. We got him. All right. This is exactly what we needed to do. Oh, he's actually, uh, he's actually overpowering me at this point. Hmm. Well, let's fight him. Let's fight him and see what we can do. Because obviously last time we also had a similar situation where... Oh no, wait! Haha, <laughs> I was reading it the wrong way because I'm used to Byron's colors. That's hilarious. Okay, yeah, I'm used to Byron's colors from the Kuzate playthrough because he played with the Kuzate for a very long time and I'm like, oh yes, it's, it's him. No, 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 it's actually not him. Anyway, yeah, so we're overpowering him by a slight margin. So that's pretty good. Infantry! And hopefully we're going to be able to do something nice here. Now this is snow. Not a big fan of fighting in snow, as I've told you many times before. And I don't, e I don't even know why, to be honest. Because the snow is not that bad. Oh, nice headshot on the horse. Didn't really want to hit the horse, but good enough. Good enough. Because that means that we might very well have an opportunity to eliminate this guy. Nice. 45 damage in the shoulder. And he is now on his, uh, on his lonesome. And there we go. All right. 
So let me tell my forces to hold fire, tell my archers to hold fire, and we're going to be moving my forces down here. This is actually one of my favorite battlefield layouts. This is a really, really cool layout in my opinion. I like this a lot. And um, the only unfortunate thing about this is that it is going to provide the cavalry heavy Kuzate a pretty significant advantage. They have... Wow, okay, never mind. They only have seven cavalry total. I think that's true. So now it's just a case of me not getting shot in the face. So I'm going to just raise my shield up quite a bit here. And where are my archers? My archers are around here. Let's get my cavalry over here as well. Even though I don't think we really need to worry too much. Unfortunately, my recruits are pretty, pretty weak here. They're pretty weak because they don't have any shields. Um, so we're going to just have to try and rely on my ranged units as much as we possibly can and let's see if I can maybe do some damage myself there we go nice a little bit of damage and I'm gonna have to run my cavalry in here relatively soon as well oh these guys are run straight at us this is not a good idea for them to do so oh nice we hit him we hit him okay so I'm just going to fade into our infantry a little bit. Going to tell my cavalry to charge in. These guys are going to charge me down a little bit, but that's absolutely fine. No problem at all there. There, oh, there we go. Nice. Oh, nice damage. Okay, so now let's tell my uh, infantry to charge in. And oh, I don't really want to be dealing with the guy on the horse. That's really not something that I should be doing, really. Just trying to eliminate the infantry as much as possible because if we can eliminate the infantry and the various recruits and things we should have a much easier time actually dealing with the enemy on mass because we're doing so much morale damage as a result and it seems like that is indeed going to happen i'm going to need to get a better shield in my opinion look at my look at it it's so small it's really really way too small for what we need it for we need to get something like a broad shield or something like that because if we're not going to be using a mount then getting a uh, broad shield or some, some something like that, you know, is probably going to be very advantageous for us. So I'm going to be on the lookout for a new shield, because shields are actually not even that expensive, which I think is really great. And uh, being able to find those pretty much anywhere is really good. Uh, this guy's going to try and charge me down, isn't he? Yeah, that's not going to work, sir. Oh, no. Oh, dear. Uh, can, I, can I reload before this guy? Oh, no, never mind. <laughs> I was thinking to myself, can I reload before he attacks? No, it seems like I can't. And there you go, took him down. And now let's just get out my crossbow. Where is he? Oh, never mind. He's running. He's running. All right, so we lost 11 units. That is to be expected, of course. And we lost mostly recruits, which, in my opinion, is perfectly acceptable. Nothing really to worry about there. And we now have him as a prisoner and we gain another 4,000 gold. We're actually doing pretty well here to try and uh, <laughs> uh, weaken them ever so slightly. It's uh, I feel pretty de dejected about the whole thing because I'm thinking to myself, yeah, we're doing well, but then I think about how everyone else in the uh, Southern Empire is just getting themselves taken prisoner almost constantly and it is making things very difficult for us. So... Not sure how I'm going to do it, but we'll we'll continue trying. I mean, that's the whole point, you know. That is the whole point of the whole thing, you know, to try and win against all the odds. And that's exactly what's happening. Absolutely. All right, so wait a minute, wait a minute. I did, I did just get a bunch of shields. These are all awful, so I will not be using any of those. But I will be going to a nearby... I could go to here, I guess. Mm, yeah, Lycaron's actually under siege, of course, by the Western Empire. Uh, I guess I could go over here, but I've got to be a bit careful. I'm actually wondering what is going to happen to the two lords in my prisoner's holds, because I obviously don't have any mods installed, so I'm not entirely sure how, how that works anymore, because before, with Barney the First, I would just execute them, but obviously with Barney the Second. That's probably not going to happen as often, if at all. So we'll, we'll see. We'll see what happens with that. Anyway, um, yeah, I actually did level up. Um, 
a while ago, I think in between episodes or in, at, at the uh, end of the last episode. And then my one focus point, I spent it in scouting because I personally feel like scouting is going to be super important for someone that is not primarily using cavalry in their army and to have that additional movement speed and the additional warning of where enemies actually are is probably going to be kind of important. Anyway, let's see if I can sell a couple of things here. That's exactly what we'll do. There we are. Now, I do want to have a look here. Let's see if I can get anything good. This is pretty good. That's a massive shield. Reinforced wicker shield. I mean, uh, look at look at my shield at the moment, yeah? This is a fantastic shield in regards to hit points and everything. But it is very, very difficult to have that really work. Because on the one hand, it is fantastic in terms of HP. And on the other hand, it is really, really small. So that's a bit of a problem. Ah, Pavis Shield. There we go. This is the kind of thing that I'm talking about right here. I think this is going to be something really, really good for us. But it is 3,600. All right. So I've done a little bit of rearranging here. I did buy the Pavis Shield. And it is going to cost me quite a bit of cash. But I think I should have. Yeah, as you can see, I actually should have a... Uh, a little bit of extra loot here and I've actually given Ira back her knight's kite shield because while it is fantastic in terms of its hit points it is not so good for me because of its smaller area size and because Barney the second is such a massive guy uh, it's very difficult to cover all of him with such a small shield so that's generally what I'm thinking right now. Normand um, <laughs> I, I think I think he's okay as it is right now. I, I don't really want to really give him anything else. I think at the moment, I think he's doing fine. And I kind of need to look after my finances for the moment. Anyway, this is the shield that I'm going to be using. As you can see, it is much, much better in regards to area coverage. And I'm pretty happy with it. So now that we have 7,500, I do have a lot of level ups as well. And we're going to be leveling up these guys. Palatine guards are going to be my main thing, I think. They're going to be the main thing that I go for. Imperial heavy horsemen, we can level up those guys as well. Because I do have a couple of war horses. And we got... Oh, look at that. Boar champion. That's actually pretty cool. Boar champions are pretty fun to use. And we have both of these guys in custody, basically. So we're doing pretty well, personally. But the... Uh, <laughs> The Southern Empire is not doing so well. Aha. All right. So we actually have an army potentially starting here. So what I will do is I will go over to them and I will say hi and I'll see exactly how they're doing. Because if we can kind of figure out uh, something to maybe help out a little bit, then we might. Oh, hello, Fafen. Ooh, he's looking. He's looking good, isn't he? Oh, yeah. We could potentially attack him very easily and win very easily indeed. This is going to be pretty good for me. If I can... Regea? Are you going to help? She's helping. Okay, come on now. Let's try and get him. Let's try and get him. Okay, don't, don't, don't stop. Don't stop, Regea. Yes, yes. Okay, this is actually fantastic. This is good. This means that if he runs into someone else, like Tulag's army, for example, then we might be in problematic situations. But no, no, no. Look at that. We actually were able to get him. Can he? No, he can't tell me about Pendrake, but it's not really a big deal, as we've seen, because uh, the developers have added in that new uh, sandbox creation thing once you have a certain clan tier. So that's, that's pretty good. Anyway, this is going to be great. It's been a very long time, if at all, that I've ever fought the Sturgeons. Because uh, I think I've fought them very, very scarcely. Because obviously in my first playthrough I played with the Sturgeons. And then I just never really went up into that area. And as a result, I never really had any experience against them. So this is going to be quite fun. Oh, I thought that he was going to go to the left there a little bit earlier than he actually did. Oh, well, never mind. Okay, so I'm just going to put my infantry around about here. Let's get them into a shield wall. Cavalry can come over here as well. And then let's just move these guys into a loose formation. And um, we are actually pretty far away from the opponent. So it's going to be highly unlikely that we will be able to do anything. Oh, wow. <laughs> 
<laughs> he got eliminated so, so hard right there. We didn't see how he got eliminated, but you can see just how he sprawled out on the it's snow the that he really took quite a bad hit. So, yeah, definitely not going to be waking up anytime soon, is he? No, not, 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 not at all. And when he does wake up, he's going to be in our dungeon. And then he's going to be ruining the day that he crossed Mr. Barney the Second, Bear Tilled. Yes, exactly. And uh, let's get our cavalry over here as well. Now, what I'm actually trying to do, don't know whether you've noticed that, but what I'm trying to do is just very subtly, very, very sneakily build up our cavalry forces. Because if we can build up our cavalry forces just a little bit more, we will have a massive advantage on the field in comparison to what we're currently seeing here. Oh, nice hit. Okay, I would actually like to try and increase my crossbow skill by fighting against these recruits if at all possible. So it would be quite nice to uh, do quite a bit of damage to them. Nice, nice, yes. Very good. And uh, let's try and take out that guy. Ah, I hit him in the chest, which is actually better than usual. There we go, Sturgeon Hunter. Hmm, interesting. Nice. Okay, I'm actually going to tell my uh, infantry to charge in. The main reason why I wasn't doing that is because I am a terrible commander. <laughs> uh, nah. That's, I mean, I'm okay, but, you know, sometimes I just forget to charge them in because I'm having so much fun using my ranged weapon. I also had that issue with Barney the First, hilariously enough, where I was just like, Throne weapons! Let me concentrate all of my brain power on throne weapons! And then, as a result, I would lose all of my units. Yes, that would happen. But thankfully not this time, and we are actually up against a vassal as well, which is actually pretty cool. Being able to defeat him without too many difficulties. Gonna continue rescuing Imperials as much as I possibly can. And all the loot that we gained from it is very, very useful for us. And also we gained a lot of experience too. This is actually working out a great deal better than I anticipated. Actually a very, very nice bit better. So we're going to continue increasing our infantry capacity because, as I've said, we're going to be getting um, we're going to be getting cavalry from the various Kuzate units, and that's going to be pretty good for us. And now I have to be very careful here because we're we're pretty yeah we're not so deep, but we're kind of on the cusp of the border here. I've got to be a bit careful. Hello, who's that? Forest people. Oh, you might be able to give me a little bit of assistance here. And who's this guy? Does he have a lot of people? He's got 24 recruits. What's he running around with? He's got 44 recruits. Well, that's hilarious. It's a battle of the recruits by the looks of things. You know, all things considered, I think I might just like to go back to a nearby town. Lycaron is, I think, the closest to us at the moment. And uh, yeah, there's Regea. So she's actually attempting to besiege Odrisa Castle. Now, where is Odrisa Castle, you ask? It's all the way over here. I don't know why she would go all the way over there to do a siege when Phaikeon is right here and has less units in the garrison than what she has in her current army. It doesn't really make that much sense to me. But AI has its own uh, own way of thinking and who knows what they're actually going to plan on doing. So they're running around with 407. Yeah, besieging Odrisa Castle. That is not going to work, in my opinion. I think that's probably not going to go very well. But anyway, we're going to go over to Lycaron. I will try and help Regea, but I just want to sell a bunch of my loot because we were able to um, basically take out one of the stronger vassals, or at least, I, well, not one of the stronger ones, but one of the Sturgeon ones that we came across. So that's pretty good in my opinion. And I would like to buy some more food here as well. Just a little bit. Sell this, sell that, 1,500. Oh, Lycaron has no more, has no more money? Are you serious? That's kind of weird. Anyway, that's going to be it for this episode. I thank you very much for watching, and I will see you next time.